During childhood, she demonstrated a dramatic flair and an insatiable appetite for reading. A whole library stack quickly proved to be just not enough. To the unsuspecting, her big, infectious smile would have often concealed her shrewd and perceptive nature, as well as her serious attention to detail. These traits, along with a supportive family and an Anglican upbringing, were essential in molding the young, brilliant and confident Paula Llewellyn, who emerged from law school. Before long, she became a formidable and highly admired prosecutor in the office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. But this was only the beginning. In 2008, Ms. Llewellyn was appointed Director of Public Prosecutions. She was the first woman to hold the position. The jurors have spoken in our system of justice. DPP Paula Llewellyn's media appearances reveal a professional who has a deep appreciation for her role as a public servant. And she's here with us today on The Alric Show. DPP Paula Llewellyn, thank you so much. It's good to be here with you. I am you. so honored to be, and to be sitting here with you today. Remember yes. that your taxes help to pay my salary. <laughs> so <laughs> the humility is mine. So your, your position is to really care about us. Within the four, fr four frames of the law. Right. What are those four frames? Because I have found that you, when you have issues arising mm -hmm. in the public domain that attract a lot of high public interest, mm -hmm. you will have the court of public opinion who emote and would wish to see a particular result one way or the other. Yeah. But when we examine it from the circumstances and the relevant law, it may not necessarily, in terms of how it will be resolved in the courts, yeah. sit well with the court of public opinion. Because though we can emote or empathize or sympathize, sometimes the law will oblige us to go in a particular direction which the court of public opinion may not necessarily like. Right. I, I can imagine that a lot of people, we wake up every day and we'd wish that we'd have very few problems to deal with. For you, how do you um, categorize all the issues that you have to deal with and to, and to take on what I would probably call the burdens? Well. May I call you Alric? Yes, ma'am. Yes. It's only if you lived in utopia mm -hmm. that you wouldn't have problems. Life is about how you navigate around the challenges that are inevitable. Mm -hmm. The word vicissitudes also tells you that that is inherent in life. So you have to, how I would put it, step forward to meet life. Yes. Not retreat and allow life to hand out whatever it wants to, to you. And I like to attack the things that I have to deal with, with a lot of positivity, grace, because it's important. When you're in public life, you have to deal with the slings and arrows coming in your direction, but you make sure that when you go through the fire, you come out on the other side like finely tempered steel, ready to wheel and go again. Wow, that, that, that's so nice. You could end the show. But how do you deal with when the pressures hit you? Are there times when you'd probably feel like, no, Paula, no, Paula, it's best you stay on the quieter end of the fence. Or what? Give up? Mm. Give up. Giving up. Or staying on the quiet side is not a part of my lexicon. Listen, mm -hmm. I am privileged since my time as DPP to work with a lot of very energized, passionate professionals. Right now we would have over 50 lawyers that work with me. The holder of the office under the constitution is the one who has the power and you gift it to the people who work with you. But in terms of accountability, accountability to the public, it is the DPP, it is Paula Vanessa Llewellyn. Now, how do I 
deal with some of these challenges. Yes. I depend a lot on my staff. I trust my staff. I collaborate, I consult, I have an open door policy so that when we have big issues in the public domain, my first go-to is my staff. We will research the law, we collaborate, we may sometimes disagree, but at the end of the day, we make our decisions on the law and the particular circumstances using very often our college collective experience. How did you develop this level of confidence and boldness and to stand your ground? Well, first of all, I had very good mentors. I've always been a frustrated actress. A frustrated when, actress? Yes, when I was in primary school at St. George's Girls Primary on Duke Street, good Anglican school, I'm an Anglican, I was very shy. Nobody believes it, but I can assure you, <laughs> I, I speak with a lisp. I used to wear these awful cat eye glasses. My mother insisted on putting these big ribbons in what some children would call picky picky head. You know, you have the plaits. But when it came to reading and vocabulary, lisp, tongue and all, I could not be beaten. I was a voracious reader. At primary school, books were my constant companion. Yeah. When I went to, to the common entrance and went to St. Hughes High School, another good Anglican school, my mother was a committed Anglican, mm -hmm. so her children had to go to Anglican church schools. I found that my second form, the original desire to be a librarian, librarian went out the door. I had wanted to be a librarian because I read so quickly. My appetite was so voracious that I could just pick up several books and I read them off. My mother, I remember, would say, Paula, go to the front of the house and mop out the living room. I would say, I have to go down and use the bathroom. I'm in the bathroom <laughs> and I have a pile, always have a pile of two or three books here and there, and I would literally sit down on the toilet seat and I would read off uh, Nancy Drew or mm. read off some other book. Of course, your thighs are burning you, but you don't care. <laughs> you have just been able to escape into your world of reading. Or I'd go on the front veranda and sit down with the mop leaning up with three books. All right, when we come back, we continue our conversation with the DPP, Paula Dwelling. I'm a prosecutor, we go on evidence. If we have the evidence and it is cogent and it comes up to the required standard, then we have a fighting chance. And Paula Llewellyn certainly gave herself a fighting chance in the early years. The evidence she submitted earlier was her spirited mannerism and a punch on for quickly reading through piles of books. I figured Nancy Drew was no longer on her reading list. What do you read these days? Well, a lot of case files, <laughs> <laughs> law, <laughs> precedents, you know, yeah. and a lot of paperwork. Yes. So that voracious reading, although I'm told behind my back, <laughs> behind the back. my staff will say, if you have something on the computer, or if you have anything and you're going through it with Miss Lillian, she's always ahead of you, because <laughs> I, I still read fast. <laughs> you know, but as you would imagine, the, 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 the burden of work is yeah. great for a prosecutor, let alone the DPP. So when I went to about age 14, mm -hmm. I discovered I'd always had a love of, you know, you know, reciting poems and even acting. So merging the two, I realized that I am a communicator after all, list tongue or not. So I wanted to do law. Yeah. As of second form, I decided that Law is what I was going to do. So, so the acting side, what do you think? Has to do with advocacy. Mm -hmm. I am an advocate. Um, I made my name as an advocate before the jury. Yes. Now, when you are before the jury, you know, um, I'm told, I am told that I have a flamboyant style. Ah. I love to smile. I don't watch the smile. Because in the twinkling of an eye, once I have the evidence, I'm going to go for the jugular. 
But I sm are you smile doing it? Well, <laughs> but I'm very, very serious when it comes to my work. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to my work, it is important that your integrity mm -hmm. shines through. I was privileged to have had great mentors. My first great mentor was my mother, Mavis Llewellyn. She was a nurse. She believed in giving service above mm -hmm. self. And she believed that when you are going to face the inevitable potholes and challenges, she would say to me, Paula, remember, nobody can crack your head and take out what is in it. Mm -hmm. And she would say that you embrace hard work because when you have an excellent work ethic, nobody can use hard work to frighten you. I have been privileged to have in the 30 years, 30 odd years, to have appeared against all the Queen's Council or King's Council in the criminal bar, including the right, most honorable P.J. Patterson. Wow. I did one of my first murder cases against him before he went full time back into politics. And his junior was the previous, the past public defender, Arlene Harrison Henry. You won that case against PJ? Well, <laughs> prosecutors never win. We yeah. succeed. Sex. Oh. Because our role is to put forward, forward. the best available evidentiary materials. Yes. And then the jury or Listen. the judge will decide. Mm -hmm. So you use your skill, your knowledge of the law, your advocacy to put forward the best. Well, let us put it this way. It was a murder case. And the jury were hung, 11 were saying, I am told guilty, and one was saying not guilty. In those days, you couldn't take divided verdict, so when you have a hung jury, the matter had to be retried. Mm -hmm. But Mr. Patterson came to me sometime after, and his partner, Carl yeah. Rattray, um, of blessed memory, and they indicated that they were so impressed that they invited me to join Rattray Patterson Rattray. Yes. I was quite flattered being a young, young law. you know, yeah. really feisty <laughs> advocate. And when I thought about it, yes, they had an excellent practice, which was civil. And, you know, they did a lot of land um, conveyancing. But I declined the offer because I wanted to be a public servant, having been the child of a nurse, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be a prosecutor. That is my passion. I am a communicator. And you'll find that in the criminal arena, as I said, you know, I'm able to... Be flamboyant. Well, <laughs> I have a flamboyant personality. That's it, right. Um, but that is what I wanted to do, public service. Oh. Because it is important that members of the public yes. know that they have people who are highly skilled, mm -hmm. who are committed to give service above self, to serve them. I read too many people in public life who have high rank sometimes forget that it's not the people of Jamaica, the ordinary man and woman on the street, who are serving them. It is you, you who are serving the people. Now, I try to keep my nose to the ground. I tell people all the time, you know, when I'm introduced giving a guest speaking at some function, and I remember early on in my tenure, I was introduced as Paul Edwin, the first female DPP who was elevated to the position. And I said, oh no, I said to the public there, I said, oh no, I was only appointed. Mm. Only angels are elevated. Mm. And I am just a humble prosecutor <laughs> with my feet on the ground. So when you keep your feet on the ground and you have high emotional intelligence, which I think I have, and you're a communicator, then you try as best as possible. It isn't always possible, and it isn't always appropriate, that where you have high public interest matters that may be at risk of suffering from perception versus reality, mm -hmm. then under my tenure, I have popularized 
for transparency and accountability, even if it's not popular, giving press releases or making um, the, the media have access to I or one of my senior officers to explain what the factual reality is. We take a break. When we come back, DPP Llewellyn talks about the importance of fairness and integrity in carrying out her duties of office. The, show. the mission of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions is to fulfill its constitutional mandate by providing the people of Jamaica with an independent, professional, and effective prosecution service. However, there are times when landing a successful prosecution may not be in sync with popular public opinion, provoking the ire of sections of the public. I put this to DPP Llewellyn. How do you feel um, to know that you're probably hated by many? Um, well, I must confess, mm -hmm. as I go to the supermarket and I go on the street, I get a lot of love. And I can tell you, even in respect of the people that we prosecute, or I have prosecuted, once they recognize that you are being fair, I have found very often in terms of the feedback coming through the police or even coming through their attorneys, it's not that you will like the fact that you have been successfully convicted but at the heart of it, what the concern very often is, is that the process has been fair. It doesn't always appear that way to John Public, you think? Well, you know, I think a lot of us in public life, in this era of social media, mm. realize that there are two prisms, if you can put it that way through which the court of public opinion may look at a scenario or situation. You have reality, which would be based on the actual facts, and you have what was recently in the um, lexicon called alternative truths, mm. which social media very often has been able to elevate mm. to reality. And it really is founded on perception. And that is the, the road to die on for a lot of people who are in public life. Because you have to be able, in terms of your communication or public relations or your emotional intelligence, mm. have to be alive to how to deal with an issue where it is perception or alternative truths mm -hmm. that are really out there as opposed to what is actually reality. How did you embrace the appointment to head Well, first of all, office. not only was I the first female DPP, but I was the first DPP who had to um, go through a competitive process. Mm -hmm. So there was an advertisement and I applied. You I applied. was encouraged to apply. Uh -huh. Prior to that, all of my predecessors were simply selected mm. by the Prime Minister. Prime Minister, of course, according to the um, fiction or nonfiction, is entitled to collaborate or consult right. with the leader of the opposition. But it really is the appointment by the Prime Minister. Right, because now, now, now we can get into the fact that you have a lot of people now talking about your extension as well, DPP. I, I just regard that as static because as was explained, um, the Pensions Act, I believe, has seen public servants um, being ex extended to 65. But do you really want to be in the position still? Well, I'm there. Because the thing is, mm -hmm. and perhaps publicly let me see, when I asked for the first extension, it was to accomplish two main things. Mm -hmm. We were in the middle of the biggest gang case that had ever been tried in the Caribbean. And that is? The Andre Brand Blackman 
um, what is it now, Klansman case. We started out with 50 accused. And because of my experience and leadership, we were able to whittle that down to 33 viable persons to be prosecuted. There were a lot of security issues around it. We had two very high net worth value members, former members of the gang who were giving evidence who we had had to um, assist the witness protection program right. people in keeping them engaged. So there was a lot around it. So it would have needed and benefited from my extensive experience as a prosecutor and a leader. It would have been difficult for the prosecution to change leadership Ship. of the DPP at that time. And, and, right? Mm -hmm. So that has been accomplished and the rest is history. Yes. We have um, got convictions in terms of Mr. Brand and 15 or 14 of the top tier leadership of that gang. Also, we had just commenced, that is the first extension yeah. received, uh, extensive renovations of the office. Mm -hmm. When I became DPP about 15 years ago, you only had space for maybe at the most 30, between 25 and 30 lawyers. Mm -hmm. When I became DPP, having done, and perhaps I was the first DPP to have done a course like that, a senior public sector executive management course, which stood me in very good stead during the interviews because they had a management module mm -hmm. which they showed to all the different aspirants to indicate how, if you had ma these managerial challenges, how would you deal with them? And I was told by the commission who interviewed me that I came out on top. So that, in addition to my extensive experience, mm -hmm. because as deputy DPP, assistant DPP, I was always on the front line prosecuting a lot of very big cases, always. And my work rate was very high and very hard. So I had acquired a lot of experience in a short space of time. We continue next week our conversation with DPP Llewellyn as she speaks on some of her most high profile and controversial cases as well as life after the meeting office. You don't want to miss it. <laughs>